Let's solve linear equations now. And again, remember that a linear equation is any equation that can be written as ax plus b equals 0 after a little bit of work. And our goal is to find the solution. Rather than being given a number, we want to see if, just based on the equation, can we find it. And the most important piece of this is a concept called equivalent equations. And an equivalent equation is an equation, or it's our two equations, that have the same exact solution set. Meaning, if it makes one of them true, it makes the other one true. If it does, then it's an equivalent equation. Now, notice I said solution set. That means there may be more than one number that'll work. But for purposes of linear equations, just about every linear equation has a single answer, and so equivalent equations are any equations that have that same answer, that same solution. Now, the number one rule for finding equivalent equations is what you do to one side of an equation you do to the other. So if you add 3 to one side, you have to add 3 to the other side. This is all about balance. We want the sides to always remain the same, and so as long as we do the same things to them, then they stay the same. And we're going to start with two properties now, and we'll add to these as we go. But the two properties are the addition property, of equations and the multiplication property, which I'll give in just a moment. So, if we have a equal to b, then we can take some number c and we can add it to both sides. So if a equals b, then a plus c equals b plus c. What I do to one side as long as I do it to the other, they stay the same. These equations are equivalent. Now to go along with this is the multiplication property. Of equations. So this allows us to say if a equals b, then a times c equals b times c. Again, as long as I do the same thing to both sides, this allows me to keep the equations equivalent. And so again, this side of this equation is equivalent to this equation. And now, our main goal is to use these two properties to solve equations. And so we'll start with a simple equation. 1 third x minus 2 equals 4. And one thing to keep in mind is that our goal for solving is to get the x, the variable, by itself on one side. And we're going to use the, uh, the addition property and the multiplication property to do that. So here we're going to notice we always use the addition property before the multiplication property. This makes our lives easier down the road. We don't have to. We could do multiplication first, but it takes a lot more work to figure out what we need to do. So we're going to use the addition. We're going to add 2 to both sides. When we do, we get 1 third x minus 2 plus 2 is 0. 
4 plus 2 is 6. So we end up with 1 third x equals 6. Now we need to get rid of this 1 third. And so we'll use the multiplication property. 3 over 1 multiplied by 3 over 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that leaves the x by itself. And 6 times 3 is 18. And so our answer to this equation is x equals 18. And notice that x equals 18 makes this one true. If I plug it in here, if I divide 18 by 3, I get 6, so it makes our middle equation true. And if I plug 18 in, divide it by 3, and get 6, and then subtract 2, I get 4. So it makes all three equations true, and makes all of these equivalent equations with a solution set of 18. Let's do one more example. Suppose we have something a little more complicated. 4 times the quantity x plus 3 equals x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2. And again, our goal is the same, but this time it's going to take a little bit more work. We're going to start by distributing to get rid of all of the parentheses. And notice that I have to distribute a negative 3 through on the second one. So we end up with 4x plus 12 equals x minus 3x plus 6, because a negative times a negative is a positive. Well, let's combine like terms on the right side. We'll leave the left side alone for now. x minus 3x is minus 2x. And again, we want to get all the x's on one side, but now I've got x's on both. Well, we can follow one of two ways of doing this. We can either always move the smallest, or we can always move things to the left. And I'm going to choose to move the smaller one, minus 2 is smaller than 4. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Since I'm doing that, I will subtract 12 from both sides. And look at as a result, 4x plus 2x is 6x. 12 minus 12 is plus 0, so I don't need to write it. Minus 2x plus 2x is 0, so I don't need to write it. And 6 minus 12 is minus 6. Now that we've got the x's on one side and the constants on the other, we then go back through and we multiply by whatever it takes to get rid of the 6, which is 1 6. So we notice that those divide out and become an x, and minus 6 divided by 6 is minus 1. So here we find our answer is x equals minus 1, and that'll make this one true. It'll make this one true. It'll make this one true. It'll make this one true, and it'll make this one true. Because these are all equivalent equations with a solution set of minus 1.